Anglican. Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 407. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Alan Haley. And today is June 12, 2018. As always, something breaks either at the state Supreme Court level or the uh, federal Supreme Court level, or somebody files a brief and you're on vacation. Right, just got back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send an email. Alan, did you see? And I just, I'm waiting, waiting, refresh, 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 refresh. And no, he's enjoying himself. He's out there somewhere with his uh, um, wonderful wife traveling the country and, and uh, <laughs> doing the things you do when you're about to hit retirement. We got, uh, we got, to, we got news, Alan. Trying and, to get there. Yes, we did. And uh, we need to bring it as faithfully as we can to uh, our viewers or around the world. Uh, the f uh, federal Supreme Court has decided not to hear the case from South Carolina. Um, it was rejected at conference. Tell me what that means. That means that when they considered all the cases that they've been asked to review. The ones assigned for that particular day last Thursday included this one from South Carolina, and each of the justices has to bring up a case if they want a vote on it. Either nobody brought the case up, or if someone did, they have to have four votes among the justices to accept it. So we know that we couldn't get four votes to accept the case. I read the uh, some of the forms that were submitted, and it looked like it was a reasonable case. Well. I think so too. In other words, um, it's um, it's a case that they should have straightened out the mess they made in 1979 with an opinion called Jones v. Wolf. They haven't touched the subject since then. We're going on 40 years, and the lower courts have made an, uh, an unholy mess of the whole thing, uh, interpreting Jones v. Wolf one way or another to allow the churches to get away with murder, or to allow the churches require the churches to comply with state law. South Carolina used to be one of the case states that required the church to comply with state law. But in the latest decision, the fractured decision, they couldn't even come up with a rule on that. Um, and so it kind of uh, is, you're in nowhere land now in South Carolina as far as the ability of the, uh, I mean, the last word on it is that the Dennis Canon is no longer valid in South Carolina. And they, they couldn't muster three justices Okay, they couldn't. Well, that's the that's the important point here. A couple years ago, they had the case before them um, with uh, Polly's Island, and it was whether or not the Dennis Cannon could have effect in South Carolina. The Supreme right. Court of South Carolina said no, the Dennis Cannon has no effect. Correct. How and does that go this... so bad? Well, I think I, I'd like to talk to you as a lawyer about the difficulty in taking a case to court as a Christian. Uh, now, if people see your, your camera going in and out, we've been yeah. having trouble with it since uh, the, we started uh, our pre-show about half an hour ago. We yeah. uh, have rebooted his computer, we rebooted my computer, we've done everything humanly possible. Uh, it's just one of those things. I have an Apple product from Steve Jobs. He has a Microsoft product from Bill Gates, and they're fighting right now. Uh, thanks, right. Skype. Um, <laughs> tell me a little bit about your experience of for Christians going to court. Well, I've always, you know, been a follower of St. Paul as, as an attorney and a litigator. Litigation is the last thing you wish on people. It's a horrible experience. Its outcome is random. You can't predict it, even with the best of cases. And uh, it's a last resort that you went go to when everything else has failed. So mediation is the preferred solution, according to St. Paul, and it's still the best solution. But um, that requires, you know, somebody who's willing to come in and compromise and be meeting in Christian good faith, as St. Paul assumes. And the problem is that the Episcopal Church, in passing the Denon Canon, Dennis Canon, and in hounding all these parishioners and vestry over the years, suing them personally and all that kind of thing. Uh, they are just, uh, you know, they're not willing to compromise. They're not um, until they've got all the cards on their side and then they'll dictate the terms to you as they've done in Pennsylvania and other places. So that's what they do. It's a, um, it's unfortunate and they kind of force people into this, but 
St. Paul clearly said Christians had no business taking disputes to court among Christians. And I, you wonder if the justices on the Supreme Court were saying the same thing. <laughs> my lawyer said this to me after taking a lot of my money in business <laughs> consulting. <laughs> he has a nice hourly wage, almost as bad as mine. And uh, he said, Kevin, there are good people that make horrible lawyers, and there are horrible lawyers that are good people. And it, you never know what, what's on the other end of the table when you show up in court. And no. um, uh, that's the, the variable of the law, uh, and the law allows for that. Well, of course, it's not just that they're bad lawyers, they're also uh, bad clients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes the lawyer is not free to follow what he, his own devices. He has to follow the wishes of a client who wants to make it as hard as possible for the other side or wants to spend a lot of money uh, making it very costly for the other side and win in that fashion. And so, yes, uh, lawyers can be bad, but also it's the clients that drive them ultimately. Okay, what's your best guess now for the, the de deposition of churches and, and property in South Carolina? What's South gonna, Carolina. What's going to happen? Yeah. Well, it's unfortunately ended up back in the lap of the Dorchester County Circuit Court. I don't know if that's going to be the same justice, Diane. Uh, um, I can't think of her last I, name I, right now. Good, yeah. Goodstein, Goodstein, I think mm -hmm. it is. Uh, if, she, if it will come back to her, she'll have to do her best to try to sort out the opinions of the South Carolina Supreme Court. The problem there is you have three votes to overturn the decision below in which she awarded all the property to the parishes. So that, that decision is overturned, but you don't have three votes uh, supported by the same reasoning to transfer the property to the Episcopal Church. And two of the justices applied one standard uh, of review, and the third justice never said what standard he was applying, but he clearly didn't apply the same one that the other two didn't. And that's the other two. Well, that's that's the difficulty here. When you look at the 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 decision, there is no one interpretation of the decision. No, you can't have one because there's no unifying uh, rationale among the various justices. They couldn't agree on it. It's a non-decision in that sense because it, you can't cite it for any precedent. Um, and I don't know. So, and for example, Camp Christopher uh, was mentioned by only one justice, uh, the Chief Justice Beatty, in his decision. Well. It's not mentioned by the other two who applied strictly the Dennis Canon, and the Dennis Canon, on its terms, doesn't apply to diocesan property like Camp Christopher. So where Justice Beatty was coming from with that, he obviously wasn't relying on the Dennis Canon, and the other two relied wholly on the Dennis Canon. So can you say Camp Christopher has to go over to the Episcopal Church? I don't see there's a there's a rationale there. It may be that the Circuit Court has to throw up her hands and say, you know, we need more instruction from you, Supreme Court. We can't do anything with this. I don't know. It's going to be, they've made a mess. They're going to have to lie in it and try to see what they've got. That it's, And that's all because Justice Hearn refused to recuse herself until the very last minute when she was finally safe. She recused herself only after she had voted to deny the petition for rehearing. And so, <laughs> I mean, actually, she recused herself just before that vote, but she knew then the vote would be two to two. She so did, she, did, yeah. she didn't have to vote, yeah. But, you know, if she recused herself, then she should have recused herself throughout and uh, tossed the whole case back to be re-argued before five new judges. And maybe that's where we'll end up, because if this does get back up to the Supreme Court, eventually the, they won't all be there. Um, well, two of them have retired, and there might be a third one on the way, but I don't know how long Justice Beatty's going to be there. So <laughs> you're saying that people do not have to vacate their churches next week? They don't have to vacate their churches next week now. Okay. Um, that, that it's going to take a, a long while to sort it out, and it's going to take a lot more attorneys. And maybe their mediation will continue. They've also got the federal lawsuit pending. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah. You know, it's a sad commentary on our court system because neither the South Carolina Supreme Court nor the U.S. Supreme Court could be troubled to give a clear uh, direction to the parties in this case. Whereas the, the South Carolina Supreme Court was fractured all over the place, the U.S. Supreme Court seems bent on like things like redefining marriage, legislating, you know, re-legislating Obamacare and redefining what a tax is, and uh, doing all these, this legislating instead of ju 
if they get back to judging, it would be a lot better. But they're an activist court this way that they've been doing things, at least five of them are, and you can't get them interested in s traditional property law. No, and um, just for the people new to this, what exactly is neutral principles? Neutral principles means that everybody gets treated the same in issues of real property. We know the laws of real property have been settled for over 400, 500 years, and everybody should have to do it the same way. And one of the laws of property is how you make a trust. The way you make a trust is you take property that you own and you put it, uh, you put it in trust by signing a deed that says, I hereby declare that my property now is held in trust for Kevin or trust for somebody or like that. Uh, the Episcopal Church did it backwards, said we hereby declare that all parishes' property is held in trust for us. And uh, that is not the way you do things. And so that's not neutral principles. When the Episcopal Church gets away with doing that, it's being given a privileged status that no other uh, trust store can do. It, to be able to go around declaring property and trust for yourself, it's a uh, grand power to have, but who gave it to you? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the, the church just down the street here, uh, every weekend the Girl Scouts meet there, and the Boy yeah. Scouts, and the, the AA, um, they're all in there. This would be like AA saying, well, we meet here, um, you let us meet here, we're going to create a trust where we own this church. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, 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 and that's the, the minutia of crazy law. I mean, we, we say law is blind or justice is blind, but what right. does that really mean? Well, it, it should mean, as I say, that all people are treated alike, but the Episcopal Church seems to be like the, the um, horses in uh, the animal farm uh, and the pigs. They get treated just a little bit better than, than the other animals, and uh, it's all are equal except the pigs are a little bit more equal than the others. They're special, yes. All right, so we uh, watched the, the wonderful sermon by uh, Presiding Bishop Curry at, at the wedding over in England talking about love. And uh, it looks like South Carolina has been loved to death by the Episcopal Church. Um, if this continues to go bad and it goes back to court, uh, from what I've watched, certainly in central New York and other places, uh, when the Episcopal Church has a property that they can't fill, they have a fire sale. And I watched right. fire sale after fire sale to uh, the Islamic community. Yeah. And I don't know how strong it will be in the South, but they'll have problems with certain properties, the historic properties, mm -hmm. St. Paul's and, and St. Philip's in, in Charleston, um, or St. Michael's. And uh, it's going to be... A real problem for them to try to dispose of those. Uh, it may be also that some of the parishioners in those churches uh, will just try to um, stay there some way, one way or the other. I don't know. It's it's too early to tell because they're they're going to have to fight things out and get the court to give a final definitive ruling. That, that this I mean this is why. What can you do at this point? You can't. Uh, the Episcopal Church can't go in and get an order telling people to vacate the churches because there's no consensus of the highest court on just how that should be done and with which churches that should be done for. Well, the, the and, court decision that I read does not say the Episcopal Church won. No, it doesn't. And so... What do lawyers do all day? Alone. I mean, yeah, the, the, the yeah, one that yeah. we want to know is a winner. All we have is... The, the Diocese of South Carolina hasn't, hasn't won. The Episcopal Church hasn't won. That's crazy. No, well, and, and here's the thing. All they did was reverse the decision below. They replaced Judge... So Judge Goodstein kind of has to start over again because uh, they gave her nothing in to replace it. And furthermore, here's another problem that Judge Goodstein would be, have. Um, let me get this rebooted here because this is... Oh, you froze. Important. Yeah, now, the cool yeah. thing, Skype keeps replacing you with a blue outline, so I'm glad you wore a blue, a blue dress shirt today. That, that oh. That's helping the show a lot. Okay. <laughs> In any event, uh, the real problem here is that Judge Goodstein now is faced with, there's a, an opinion by Justice Hearn who recused herself. So I don't think that just Judge Goodstein is bound in law to observe whatever was written in that opinion. 
So you're saying a, a, a recusal can be retro? Yeah, because it, the recusal means that the grounds that she admitted that she um, was basically biased by grant by uh, conceding the motion to recuse herself. And so if she's biased, uh, I don't see how Judge Goodstein can take what she wrote before at, at face value. It seems to me at least just, at least Judge Goodstein could take that position and they would have to go up to the Supreme Court again to have and Justice Hearn won't be able to get back in. She's recused herself. Good. So the other justices would have to give an order saying no, her opinion is valid or something like that. And I, I think this whole thing's a mess. It's a. I need an Advil right now. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is bad. <laughs> All right. Well, keep everybody, both sides, uh, of this uh, court decision in your prayers. Of yeah. course, we want mediation. Of course, we want uh, to be reunified, um, and that's what we seek one day: um, repentance. Right. Uh, and, and unity uh, until that day may, may be the day the Lord returns um, you know, <laughs> we certainly need to f defend Christ every day and in every way Alan I want to Absolutely. thank you for your time clearly uh, you're not off the hook um, we'll be calling you again as uh, this minutia of South Carolina and US law continues yep and let's see if we're going to sign off I'd love to reboot to be able to do do that. Okay. <laughs> You're there. <laughs> I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm Alan Haley. And this has been episode 407 of Anglican Unscripted.